Alrighty, hello. I am home for lunch, as expected. And I am bad, I don't have lunch today, so I'm eating Lucky Charms. It's actually a little hot today, especially for the walk. So I didn't actually want to be out that long. So exciting. The major is starting tonight. I believe the first games are starting at um, 9 p.m. my time. Unfortunately, Newbie and VP are playing kind of around the same round. So they will be on simultaneously and I will have to have both of them up. Honestly, I don't know which I would pick. Maybe VP because they are playing Damn, actually, I don't know. Both of the matchups are pre they're pretty good. These are only best of ones for now. So, I mean, anything can happen in a best of one, as usual. I am also organizing my movies. And my arms are freaking sore. Yeah, my arms are sore from personal training, mainly near my shoulders. I was wrong the majors for dota are starting tonight at nine o'clock fucking steam one second oops is this still going i guess so so um i am making lazy spaghetti today but i'm actually kind of excited to eat it because i haven't had spaghetti in a while and meatballs taste so freaking delicious so as i was saying dota 2 major starts tonight and nine 30-ish or like 9 o'clock sometime in China. Um, ugh, it kind of sucks because... Oh, oh man. I just noticed. Did I get the wrong box? Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> it says traditional Chinese tea series. And I was like, oh, I did it by Jasmine. But it's just a different side. Anyways... So, yes, um, newbie and VP are playing around 2 in the morning. Uh, so if I was really hardcore about it, I would be sleeping now, but I kind of don't feel like doing that. It's just best of ones very early in the event, so I will watch what I can and I'll just sleep when I can, you know, can't help it. Um, I got two books today, so I, I'm kind of bad. I have three, no, I have five books queued up right now. I'm still finishing Roger Ackroyd. I'm taking a long ass time with that one because I just haven't been prioritizing reading. Like sometimes when I'm figuring out what to do, I really do want to read. I just find it hard to sit down and dedicate time to it. I guess I'm bad like that. But I got, I decided to buy The English Patient because I love the movie and I wanted to read the book. But what sucks is that this copy looks so shitty it's new but it does not look or feel new but you know what i'm not going to make a big deal out of it another one that might be interesting i think it would be interesting is i decided to buy laurence olivier's autobiography so it's still in the plastic wrap i don't feel like taking it out right now but hardcover and apparently he was very um, candid in this autobiography. So I find it very interesting to read about it. Um, loved him in Rebecca. He's freaking handsome. <laughs> so that's another good reason to get into it. But uh, yeah, my sauce. I need to add my onions into my spaghetti and finish all of that up. So I will do that really quick. And then I have something else that I am excited to try. All right, so I have been pondering over this 
for quite a while because, all right, here's the scenario. Whenever she has stuff that she's chewing on, um, it's just, I really want to make it so that she's left to chew on it and I don't have to supervise her. And when I say supervise her, I don't want to have to stare at her the whole time. Obviously, if she's ever chewing on something, I will be here. That's a given. I think it's idiotic to not do that anyways. But, um, freaking so many animals making noise. But anyways, so my theory with this thing is that, um, I just hate disrupting her when she's chewing and then telling her to readjust. I was doing that a lot when I was using a towel only and it didn't work because she kept shifting. She would shift off the towel. I would have to tell her to stop and tell her to send herself again, center herself again. So I decided to buy this to hopefully solve my issue. So with the raised edges, I was thinking that the main reason the dog shifts around is because they are trying to adjust their grip, right? On the bone or something. And I was hoping that the raised edges would prevent the bone from ever getting off the surface unless they pick it up and get off. In which case, I would hope that she doesn't do that. If she does, I would have to kind of get her accustomed to being on this. But my goal with this is basically just to, oh, blurry. My goal with this is basically, yeah, just to hopefully have a surface that is very easy to clean. I can just spray it down, wipe it down after every time she chews on it. And then um, she can chew on it without me having to nag her constantly to not get my other things dirty when she's chewing on it. So right now, oh my God, Milo, you have such a hair tumor right here. But um, my spaghetti is finishing up, so I'm preparing, laying this down here. And then I bought more bones for her to chew on that are very icky so i will do this little experiment tonight i uh i have high hopes but uh, you never know i just really want her to be able to enjoy it without me nagging her so let's hope it works right all right here's what we have so far let's hope that she never moves off of it i actually can't see it lightly at all for her to come off. <laughs> well, I am happy to announce that this is a success. Um, I think she only got it off once, very briefly, and then I saw her get up and pick it up and come back into her little black platform of chewing freedom. I'm really glad <laughs> because um, it seems like these bones are working really well for her. Um, I got the kneecaps again, the beef ones, the small two for three dollar ones. And these are like 120 each or something. And I'm actually really happy about the price because I like chew stuff like this. I don't like toys. Toys kind of, I don't know. Toys feel kind of meaningless to me, but these are kind of like natural. So I feel like she just enjoys them better. That deer antler over there that I bought a while ago, she ignores that almost always. So those things she's just not interested in. But these, she absolutely loves them. It's so freaking noisy though, but yeah. <laughs> I think she's almost done with that one. Ah, <sighs> good morning. So I have been, hello puppers. So cute you are, you're so adorable. So I have been riding for three days and um, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. But today I just don't feel like dealing with the wind blowing on me on the highway. And maybe I just need a little bit of a break from riding because yesterday I noticed that since I was sore from the gym, it was kind of hard to like keep my grip on the handlebars and also using the throttle. Um, it just didn't feel as comfortable. So I think I'm going to take a break today and do a fashion day. <laughs> so I'm actually wearing a dress. I actually didn't think this dress was clean. Like I needed to dry clean it or something, but I can't find any stains on it. So <sighs> man, dry cleaning is such a freaking annoying chore that I need to do soon because 
I have several things that I haven't dry cleaned in a while and I'm so bad about that. But um, yes, I am going to head out very soon. And actually, so forgive my messy ass bathroom, but I realized that this is the source of my mouth being fucked up. And I'm actually kind of pissed off about it because it's basically been like wrecking my mouth because I think I noticed yesterday that right before the evening, I was feeling my mouth starting to feel better and subside. So I don't think I explained it very well. It's more than just my tongue, the tip of my tongue that's messed up. It's like uh, the roof of my mouth, the sides of my mouth, um, and the area right behind your lower jaw, like on the inside. I just feel no feeling in my mouth at all. And I'm 90% sure this is the reason why, because after I use it, my mouth feels like it's just been burned like crazy. I think the concentration of this is too high. I tried to dilute it with water yesterday, but you know what? I don't, I don't want to use this anymore because uh, I shouldn't have to jump through hoops for it to work properly for me. So I'm just gonna not use it and buy another mouthwash because I want to taste stuff again. What the hell? I can't believe it did that to me. But yeah, so um, I did watch a few games of Dota last night, but there weren't that many great games on at the very start at nine o'clock. So I got kind of tired after maybe like two games and then I wanted to go to sleep. Originally, I was planning to nap and then watch the VP game. Um, VP played around 2.30 in the morning or something like that. And I did watch it. I watched most of it in bed and they stomped EG. So I'm so happy for VP. I haven't checked the scores yet or anything for uh, all the games last night, but I'm pretty sure VP went 2-0. Um, it's all best of ones. And I haven't checked Newbie's score yet, but I, um, I'm gonna say that they went 2-0 also. Let's hope for that. But um, it's, it's just interesting because I actually think I have less free time now with the way my schedule is working, but it really just depends. So um, I've been going into work around 10 o'clock. It's like 9.26 right now, I'm gonna leave soon. But I've been going to work around 10, which means I get to wake up at eight. And even though eight isn't super late in the morning, it's still a time where I feel like I wake up feeling pretty refreshed because I go to sleep around 11 to 12 maybe a little later if I feel like it, but I just feel like I've been consistently getting seven to eight hours of sleep, which is really great. And I, I start my day feeling awesome. I get to shower, I get to eat breakfast, and I get to walk Riley. Usually I'm always rushing to get all that done that I skip breakfast like 90% of the time. But with this new schedule, I just feel like I have so much more time in the morning to get my stuff done, which is amazing. And then I get a lot of sleep, so. <laughs> Last night when I was waking up for the Dota game, I was like, man, I kind of want my sleep. Plus, I actually don't like waking up in the middle of the night for best of ones because depending on the schedule, like last night, VP played at 2 a.m., then there was a break, and then they played again at, uh, after the best of one in between. So it's kind of pointless for me to wake up for one hour to watch one game and then try to nap for that in-between game I don't care about and then try to wake up again. So like. Tonight, I am gonna check the schedule. I'm pretty sure freaking newbie plays around 2 a.m. again. And I know tomorrow's Friday, but still, um, it's kind of annoying waking up just for one game. So I'll have to see how that works out. And my, my hand is getting so tired, so. All right, I am going to head out. <sighs> Finally home. Today felt like such a long day. Um, during lunch after I left, I went to go to bubble tea because I kind of just, I haven't gotten it all week and I wanted to go today, but the freaking line was out the door, pretty much onto the curb a little bit. And that was like, what the hell? Disappointment. But anyways, um, I got a kind of an exciting package today. And I'm just going to show it very briefly because I've been naughty, but, um, so 
These were on sale. I'm the worst. These were on sale and I freaking love this pair. Um, it is a shame that I can't wear these to the office. I freaking even asked HR, I was like, can the, what the heck the spiky heels mean? And they were like, stilettos. So, fortunately, these will have to be reserved for my weekend outings. Yeah, that's one. Oil cups, what are you doing? Always sniffing everything. All right, the second one is just something to try out. So I was freaking browsing my Instagram and I saw this deal that I can buy some RX bars for, um, I guess, a pretty good deal. I don't know. They still feel kind of expensive or maybe not. I don't know. It's 12 bars for $20 and I was able to get sample ones also. So let's see. Oh man, it's freaking taped down. I need to cut this. Poppers, you're crowding me. So it looks like these. And I've actually never tried these before, but I have heard good things about them. This is what they have. So they are supposedly extremely healthy and uh, a lot of protein. They're just kind of expensive, I think. Yeah, I'll give these a try and see uh, which ones I like. I have spaghetti that I made yesterday that I will eat tonight and probably just plan on watching a movie and then watching some Dota before sleep. Freaking new BNVP play later into the night as usual. And newbie went 0-2 yesterday. What the heck? That's so surprising. I was so surprised when I checked that at work. That was such a disappointment. Hi, it is Thursday night and um... Dota is starting soon. They're drafting right now for the first uh, first game. And I know I sound weird, and that's because I've just been crying from watching um, film stars don't die in Liverpool. I'm surprised. <laughs> uh, sorry for my crying. Uh, I think that after I watch a movie that makes me emotional, it can be very hard. For me to uh control this like it kind of just comes if i'm still feeling a little sensitive to it so i kind of just i really felt like briefly talking about it uh before dota starts so forgive me and these tears and looking like a mess i don't think i've seen jamie bell in a lot of things but he did some pretty great acting in this movie so um the relationship shown between him and Annette Bening's character. Let me back up really quick. The movie is basically about um, a man named Peter Turner, played by Jamie Bell, and his relationship with Annette Bening, who plays Gloria Graham, the late actress, um, during the last few years of her life, I guess. She began somewhat of a relationship with uh, Peter, who is quite young compared to her age. And regardless of that though, like I just really enjoyed seeing them love each other and confide in each other and just all of that, you know, romantic stuff. I guess it was maybe portrayed in a way that was done well enough that it really felt touching to me. It was just kind of sad because uh, when I read about her, it sounds like she is one of those actresses that kind of got disposed of by Hollywood because she didn't want to, uh, she didn't want to allow herself to be sexualized, I guess. So it just, after watching the movie and, uh, seeing the manner in which she died and the circumstances it just kind of made me sad to think about. It made me sad to think about how um, women have to tolerate stuff like that in their job. Like I know that Hollywood is drastically different than working in an office. I'm just trying to think of 
how it would feel regardless of industry if you went to work um, every day and well maybe not every day but often you would hear about how you're not pretty enough or you need this aspect changed for your physical appearance to be more successful or um, you have to take your freaking clothes off to appeal to a larger audience like I can't imagine how awful that is to be hearing that regularly while you're trying to navigate your career so just to think about how like she seemed like she had a really promising career I believe she won an Academy Award for something and apparently she was in a movie that I might have seen years ago okay I needed to clean up my face a little bit anyways I think that is pretty much most mostly what I wanted to say about that movie I also wanted to talk about Murder on the Orient Express a little bit from 1974 with a pretty all-star cast I actually was really really surprised when I looked up the cast over so basically I started watching it Wednesday night this week and you know it's I still find it so interesting how I feel uh, how I feel like I really liked Kenneth Branagh's performance of Poirot in his adaptation. So, sorry, when I saw Albert Finney's portrayal of Poirot in this other version, it was really weird to me. Like, it threw me off. Uh, he portrayed him in a very interesting way. I found it a little weird, but it did interest me a lot to see that Apparently, Agatha Christie liked that adaptation the most out of all adaptations of her novel. So, clearly she liked his portrayal. Um, I'm not going to criticize it because people have their own uh, views of a character and how they interpret uh, their mannerisms. But I just found it very different from Kenneth's and I liked his portrayal. So... It was hard for me to get into liking the way he was portraying the detective. But um, I guess also aside from that, my issue with that book or story is just that there's a lot of characters and you don't, um, you don't really get to connect with them at all except on a surface level as a viewer or as maybe a reader I will have to see for myself if I when I read the book but just based on watching the movie um, there's just there's 12 people on the train and that's a lot of people that you don't get to know so all I do is I see their faces I see some of their interactions with each other I see him questioning them but aside from that they honestly just feel like bodies and that was kind of my issue with the movie uh i say the movie because the book might do a better job at getting you into the story but i just found it really hard to get into the story for the movie because i didn't feel connected with these characters at all the only character you feel connected to in my opinion is pyro and that's just like not good enough for me it kind of made the movie rather boring for me so i ended up splitting it up in half didn't really like it um it was really cool seeing everyone though i actually did not know that that was ingrid bergman that surprised the crap out of me i i like her i didn't know that was her so that was really cool it was really cool to find out that the lead in psycho was in the movie also um i like that vanessa redgrave there's sean connery who else was there? Lauren Bacall, that's cool. Looks like drafting is done. And now it's time for me to enjoy some wonderful Dota as the week starts to approach an end.